It's a well-known fact that most crimes are solved through good street information. In the last segment, we talked about developing good CIs and confidential street sources. In this next training segment, we're going to talk about how to get the most information out of our CIs. We're going to talk about how patrol officers can go out there and get people in a position to give you usable street information. Every cop needs street sources. It's not just for detectives or investigators. It's for anyone that wants to solve the crimes that are occurring in your area of responsibility. So we have to go out there and work people. We have to go out there and meet people every day. We have to go out there and develop contacts. And you should spend a big part of your day on patrol getting out of that steel cocoon, that squad car. That handicaps a lot of police officers. They don't just take the time to go out there and meet people. Effective police officers are going to spend a big part of their day getting out of that car and meeting people, going out there and working it, trying to find out not only who works on your beat, who hangs out on your beat. It takes work to develop a good CI, and smart officers are going to go out there and put that work in. One of the things that surprised me the most when I was working undercover in the Chicago Gang Crime Unit was how much information I heard out on the street. Bad guys can't keep their mouths shut. They're talking about crimes constantly. And it's something that a lot of cops don't realize, how much talk and gossip does go down on the street. And if you don't have contacts, if you don't have people that you can reach out to to get some of that information, you're just going to not know what's going on. You could look out that squad car window forever, and you're never going to figure out what's happening. The only way you're really going to be able to get good street contacts is to get out there and meet them, talk to them, work them. Let them know who you are. Get to know who they are. I literally sat with two guys one time that were talking about who killed the guy. And they were actually arguing about it. It was my nine that took him down. No, it was my nine. There's only two types of criminals that I've worked with in my career that don't talk much about what they do. One is pedophiles, unless they're dealing with another pedophile. The other one is serial killers. Serial killers aren't going to go out there and talk or brag about how many people they whacked. But the reality of it is, most other criminals can't keep their mouths shut. We only deal with a small percentage of bad guys. Everybody in the neighborhood we're patrolling, no matter where you're patrolling, whether it's a big city or small town, is not a criminal. Only a very small percentage of those people are committing crimes. And especially in today's environment, letting people know who you are, letting people know that you're out there working the job, doing your patrol duties, doing what you're supposed to be doing, and that's protecting the community, you want to be able to go out there and make friends, make contacts. And the more contacts you have, the more information you're going to be able to get from the street. A lot of patrol officers might not realize that they need street sources and confidential informants. There is a difference. A lot of uh, departments and agencies sign up their confidential informants where they take a lot of valuable information. They'll fingerprint them, photograph them, document them, give them a number. But there's also street sources out there. People that are just willing to talk to the police. And we have a lot of clout with people on the street. If you have the right approach, the right attitude, you'd be surprised at how many people would be willing to talk to you. And a lot of cops don't take advantage of that. There's a lot of reasons people get on board and become informants. Uh, and then there's a lot of reasons they don't. We have to understand what goes through people's minds that are thinking about possibly cooperating with you. We have to understand they have fear fear of harm or retaliation, not only against themselves, but also against family members. So that's a big consideration that we have to think about when we are talking to people. So when you're talking about that, you gotta let them know. What you tell me is gonna be held strictly confidential. Nobody's gonna know who you are. Nobody's gonna know that you talk to me. So we gotta reinforce that. We can't just assume they know. Uh, there's also a big distrust factor. People don't trust the police. And there's a lot of reasons why they don't. And some of them are valid reasons. Other cops have burned people. You know, they've said they would not give up their identity, and they have. So just as we size up everybody we deal with, people are sizing us up also. They're making judgments on, can I trust this cop? Is he going to really or she going to really do what they tell me they're going to do? I think a big problem that holds police officers back from developing CIs is that they don't spend the time it takes to get people in the right frame of mind 
to want to cooperate. So let's say you just bust somebody on a drug case and you're trying to get that person to help you move up the chain. Well, you want to move that person pretty quick. You don't want to give them a lot of time to think about what could possibly happen. So give them the phone. Have them make a dirty phone call. They don't have to order up dope, but if you can get them on the phone in front of you, making a contact, making a phone call, just discussing dope, a lot of things are gonna move a lot easier because you're taking them through that first stage. Why doesn't everybody become an informant? Well, I think a big part of it is that officers don't take the time to explain to the potential informant the benefits of them cooperating with you, of them providing you with usable street information, that you can help them out when they get into court. You'll be able to go to bat for them. If you give people too much time to think, there's a lot of things that we've talked about already, the reluctance, the distrust factor, uh, just the fact that they're going against everything that they ever said they would do. Being a snitch, being a, a informant for the police is something that most of these guys talk about they'll never do. But from my experiences, I've seen that more people will cooperate than won't. So smart cops are gonna realize that dealing with CIs is a personality game. If people like you and trust you, they'll do some pretty amazing things for you. Keep in mind though that it's always gonna be revolving around them. What is the benefit for them to cooperate? What is the benefit for them to get on board and provide you with information? Treat your CIs like a long-term investment. Dealing with CIs is like panning for gold. You're gonna pan through a lot of piles of shit before you find that gold nugget. But once you find that gold nugget, you're gonna see it's gonna be well worth the work you put in. A lot of police officers don't realize that we can use the power of bullshit. The bad guys are bullshitting us all the time. There's nothing wrong with us feeding a little BS back to them. And we can do it and we should. The bottom line is, cops can be very creative when they're dealing with the bad guys. Most people when they're initially arrested are gonna be very racked. They're gonna be very scared. They're gonna be thinking about a lot of things. They're gonna be thinking about their girlfriends. They're gonna be thinking about their families. They're gonna be thinking about their future. And this is the time we wanna get them on board. This is the time we wanna rack them. When they're nervous, when they're scared, that's when they're most susceptible to getting on board and cooperating with us. One of the techniques that I used to use all the time was called planting landmines. Planting landmines is just a little trick we use on the bad guys to make them believe that they might be in the sights of a federal prosecutor. I would tell them that I was at a meeting the other day with the federal strike force. And this is a group of federal agents that travel around the state looking to pick up local cases. And I think this is the kind of case that they would key in on, to charge with RICO. And RICO is the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. It was an act that was put in place in 1970 to fight organized crime, the mafia, but local cops have now realized that it's a great tool to use on gang and drug investigations and also on other criminals. So I would plant that seed in their head that the feds are looking, if you want to deal with me, that's fine. If you want to cooperate with me and talk with me, fine. If not, I'll call in the local strike force. The feds will be all over this case and you're gonna get a lot more time than you would in state court. An extremely important part of dealing with CIs is staying in control. You have to make sure that you know everything they're doing, make sure that they're not doing anything they're not supposed to do. Because I've seen a lot of good cops do a lot of great police work only to get torn down by some of the things they did with their CIs. You gotta keep in mind that you don't ever trust your CI completely. Don't ever do anything with a CI that you can't stand having repeated in open court. Always make sure that you double check everything your CI is telling you. You wanna make sure that you verify that. Whenever you deal with a CI and things go wrong, you're always gonna be under the spotlight. And whenever anybody's put under the intense spotlight of scrutiny, they're gonna start looking at everything you did. Everybody's gonna have wrinkles. And everybody loves you when things go good. When things go bad, it's gonna be a whole different story. It was his CI that gave us the information. It was her CI that told us about that house. So we always have to verify and double check. Whenever you use a CI to put a case together, no matter what type of case it is, when you get into court, defense attorneys are gonna take a very close look at what you did. They're gonna examine everything you did with that CI. Defense attorneys are always gonna look for the entrapment issue. How far did your CI go? Uh, were they still within the guidelines of your agency? 
and with the guidelines of what they are allowed to do and not to do. So with dealing with CIs is such an important issue that you got to make sure that you do it right. You don't want that CI lying to you. So a good way to prevent that is always ask for information you already know the answer to. And if they lie to you, call them on it. Don't be afraid to put your finger right in their face and say that's P.S. and you know it's P.S. When you're bullshitting me, you're bullshitting a lot of other people besides just me. You're going to have a judge mad at you. You're going to have a prosecutor mad at you. You're going to have a lot of other people mad at you besides just me. So it's very important that we emphasize when we are dealing with CIs, we always want the truth and we're going to insist on that. I'm a big believer in having your notebook with you when you are debriefing your CIs. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't write down what they tell you, you're not going to be able to check on the accuracy of what they've told you in previous meetings. Dealing with CIs, a lot of them are going to go south on you. You don't want to become a CI for that CI. You don't want to ever give up all your undercover cars. Don't let them see all your undercover officers or surveillance vehicles. Don't ever let them know anybody else that you're working with as a CI unless you absolutely have to. Uh, the bottom line is some cops become CIs for the CI and that can be a big mistake and unless you're paying attention to what you're giving up and telling your CI, you might fall into that trap. When my CIs came through for me with good information that resulted in an arrest or a good seizure, I always made a big deal out of praising the heck out of them. I made them feel real good about what they did. And I wanted to let them know. My boss was very happy with the results that I got from your information. You literally could have saved my life from me getting shot by somebody if I didn't get all those guns off the street. And they were right where you said they were going to be. It's important that police officers always make a big deal after they get a good, solid hit from a CI. It's important that they realize that you're going to make that CI feel good enough that they're going to want to do it again. And that's an important thing to remember. We always want to make our CIs hungry to do it again for us. And one of the things I used to say all the time is, you should have seen my boss high-fiving me when I brought in all those guns. You should have seen my partner give me a bear hug when we found all the dope and guns right where you said they were going to be. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate that. It's very important to lift your informants up, to praise them when they come through. Sometimes you're the only person in authority that ever said good job. Hey, thank you. That really means the world to me. You know, there's a lot of motivating factors with your CI. Some will do it for excitement, some will do it for revenge. Sometimes see, even CIs will do it for money. But the bottom line is, you know, there's a lot of different relationships that police officers are going to have with CIs. But if you follow the rules that we talked about during this training segment, uh, always treat your CIs right. Don't let them get away with lying to you. Always make sure that you check the accuracy of what your CI is telling you. Have your notebook out and take notes. It gives you an opportunity to check what you've been told in previous meetings. Also, uh, you always treat people right because you never know when it's going to come back later on. You might think you're done with this CI because the case is over with, but you never know what that CI might hear down the road. You never know what might come up uh, in a future case that if you treat people the right way, praise the heck out of them, treat them good. They're going to want to be your friend and having a friend out there can be a valuable asset whether you're police in a big city or a small town. When something goes down, you want to be the go-to guy or girl that people are going to reach out to and talk to.